Welcome everyone to the Dr. Todd Talks Tune Show. I'm your host, Dr. Todd Samra. And today our topic is Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel is one of my favorite artists. He's one of my favorite people and he's a, uh, I think a fantastic person, a great musician and will be remembered for a great many years for his innovative style. Of course, uh, he was born in 1950, so he's a year older than Sting. Uh, and he got his uh, start, if you will, in the, in the rock band Genesis, which many people associate with Phil Collins. And Phil Collins was a, a part of Genesis with Peter. Uh, Phil was the drummer. But then when Peter left the group um, after their album, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, uh, Phil took over the lead vocals and then they became a pop megastar band and everyone thinks of of Genesis that way but but it actually started out as a uh, basically Peter's band and uh, he decided to go out on his own uh, in the mid 1970s to kind of uh, allow himself to be as adventurous as he wanted to be uh, without having to have everyone else uh, uh, go down with him um, and he had a very successful career as a solo artist uh, and in the, in the mid 1980s 86 he had his album so which was like uh, the soundtrack to my senior year of high school uh, and great song sledgehammer uh, and big time and the like that are on that album um, and uh, but then a few years later in 1989 he he releases his album the passion which was the soundtrack to the last temptation of Christ and that is going to be our focus today of course it's going to affect the album that comes after this in the early 90s the album entitled us which is one of my favorite albums. Uh, and if you listen to So and then you listen to Us, uh, you can hear a definite shift in style. And if you listen to the passion that we're going to talk about today, it explains a lot of, of, of that shift. So the late 1980s, the, this, this uh, album comes out, The Passion, the soundtrack to The Last Temptation of Christ. Uh, and it kind of changes my life in a way because it changes the way I look at composition. It changes the way I look at writing music. This album is much more about textures uh, than it is about maybe melody or harmony. Harmonic development is important, and Peter's certainly capable of, of, of writing that way, uh, and melodically also. Uh, but that ne wasn't necessarily the focus here. And, you know, composers are kind of known maybe for one thing or another. You know, harmonic development, we think of Rachmaninoff or, or Brahms, uh, we think of orchestration, we think of maybe Mahler or Berlioz, uh, and that's not to say that Rachmaninoff and Brahms weren't good orchestrators, but Mahler was, was better. Uh, so we're being critical, not negative, uh, about this type of thing. And so for this album, Peter kind of shifts his focus to be much more uh, percussion oriented and much more improvisational. We see a lot of use of free forms uh, on this, pieces of music that probably they just kind of hit record and improvised and came up with something cool and went, that's it. Um, so we've got a lot of different types of, of music on this album uh, stylistically because it involves so many different countries. But that improvisational core kind of nature or freestyle uh, part of it uh, is really throughout the entire album. It is an instrumental album in part because it is a soundtrack for a film, but it's a mostly uh, instrumental album. Peter, he's somewhat known uh, for using his voice as an instrument. Uh, the group Deep Forest eventually is, is going to make some recordings with him where they use his voice. They sample his voice and play it on keyboards and use it as an instrument. But in this album, uh, he uses his voice, uh, like I said, like an instrument where he's singing basically nonsense syllables, words that don't really make any sense. Uh, kind of like uh, not scat singing. This isn't scat singing, but in the same manner if you will, as scat singing. And take a listen here. It starts out with a little bit of the artist Yusu Endur, uh, who's a, a North African artist who, who I, I adore. He's, he's really great. Uh, and then you can hear Peter come in and, and singing the melody, uh, and that's his, his voice. All right, here we go. I love that. And that track is called A Different Drum. 
Uh, and it was the music that was used uh, in, in the movie uh, during Jesus' uh, procession into Jerusalem, Palm Sunday. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a very kind of emotional, uplifting kind of moment uh, in, this, in the movie, and the, and the music fits it very, very well. Uh, you'll notice if, if you're familiar uh, with the other movie that was made about Jesus' life, The Passion of Christ, a different movie, uh, the soundtrack of that sounds very much like what Peter did here. I think uh, it kind of set a, a precedent. If you're going to make a movie about Jesus, the soundtrack should sound like Peter Gabriel's Passion. Uh, but to give another example, uh, with, a, with a track called The Feeling Begins, which is how the, the album opens, uh, what we have here is a, a, a slow build. This is a great piece of music to take into a music store and test out a speaker system. It really upset the employees uh, because it slowly builds uh, the percussion more and more, and deeper and heavier and bigger. And of course, it features a duduk. This instrument here at the beginning. A duduk. And a duduk is a double reed instrument, much like an oboe or an English horn or a bassoon, but it's uh, Armenian in origin. Uh, and of course, the sound of it really just blends in beautifully here, sailing over the, the texture of all the percussion underneath. And this, this first track is a great example, really, of, of how the, the entire album goes. This is, of course, how the movie begins, and that is the first line of the book. Uh, it's the first thing, it's the first line that Jesus says at the beginning of the movie. He says, the feeling begins uh, slowly, like claws coming under his eyes and whatever. And, and uh, uh, so this, this, is, this is how the, the, the film begins as well. And they're, they're setting the mood in the film also with the music. Now, not all of the music in the film is percussive in nature like that. Some of it is much more Western. I want to bring your attention uh, to the example called With This Love. Oboe, as in Western music oboe. Some synth pads in the background to sound like strings. Now, this piece, no percussion. It's got a beautiful melody. It's got a nice harmonic structure. Very different on purpose, musically, than everything else that's on this album. It really kind of is like an oasis, if you will. But remember, he's writing this music for the purposes of, of film. There's another version of it, actually, uh, with unaccompanied boy choir. Of course, it starts out here with, with a little bit of oboe. But the, the oboe and the English horn that we hear in the, in the, in the other example, uh, you know, it does kind of offset a little bit with the, the mood and the feel of all of the other music. And, and then he has this unaccompanied choir version. You can barely hear it. Of course, it's the same music uh, as the With This Love, but just with a different ensemble. But outside of that, all of the music on here is very much this world music combining together of Peter Gabriel's progressive rock uh, writing style with this world element where he's allowing people to bring in elements from their, their own culture. And he does this by bringing in 36 musicians from 36 different cultures. Um, one of the most notable is Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan, uh, who uh, unfortunately passed away in 1997, but was one of the most talented singers uh, of his generation. He's from Pakistan. Uh, he did an album together uh, with uh, another artist named Michael Brook, a guitarist from Canada, uh, that you might want to check out that album, Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan and Michael Brook. It was actually produced uh, on Peter Gabriel's record label. Um, but, but he sings on The Passion. Uh, which is, you know, at the time of the movie when, when Jesus is, is dying and is on the cross. And, uh, uh, Nusrat has this very rich, powerful voice. Uh, and he's obviously singing in a style that is not based on Western aesthetics, which is part of what else gives it is his character. But you totally can feel the, the pain and the passion in 
Nusrat's voice paired with Peter's music, and it creates this very sublime uh, uh, texture, if you will, an emotional moment that, that, that really is a, uh, you know, a very critical part of the, the film. Uh, so Nusrat Fatih Ali Khan. So he brings together a lot of these musicians on this album, and of course afterwards this changes Peter. And this gives him a new direction in terms of his style and what he's going to do with his popular music albums and what he's going to do uh, in, in other projects as well, like Ovo at the opening of the Millennium Dome. Uh, some, of, some of the character of, of Passion works its way into that. Uh, and also the, the Rabbit Proof Fence, uh, which was the soundtrack that he did uh, for, the, for the movie about the Australian girls that follow the 3,000 mile fence to get home. Um, the Long Walk Home, I think it's called. Um, so we see him shift his artistic direction here. And of course, it's not just him, it's everybody. He creates this record label. And there's all of this music that comes out after this Passion album that we now just label as world music. Many of it was done on a, on a, on a record label that Peter Gabriel created. Uh, you know, one group to check out, for example, is the Afro-Celt Sound System. Some fantastic music involving musicians from both Africa and Ireland. Uh, all your, you know, all kinds of, of interesting, interesting music that we see come out of this. That's a combination of these different elements: world music, Western music, maybe English in Peter Gabriel's case, or Canadian in Michael Brooks' case. But we see this uh, become more and more important uh, in terms of uh, composers investing in it. Of course, eventually, and, and later, I want to do a show on A. R. Rahman, the, the great uh, composer from India, who I think is one of the greatest composers alive today. And of course, an awareness of his music became possible in this country, partly as a result of the groundbreaking work of Peter Gabriel. Next episode, we're going to talk about Rachmaninoff and Prokofiev. I'm very excited. Actually, the episode is called Rachmaninoff versus Prokofiev. So if you're familiar with those composers, you're definitely going to want to tune in. Uh, but if you're not, uh, please tune in because you might actually hear some really incredible, beautiful music that you might really enjoy. Please subscribe to my channel, Todd Samra Music. Thank you for joining us today on Dr. Todd Talks Tunes, and we'll see you again next time.